Um, but this is what I wanted to look at here, right? So, so suppose you're rolling two six-sided dice and adding, right? And you do this when you're playing games all the time, right? Uh, and so, so like, what is the probability of rolling a two or a three or a four, et cetera, right? Um, so, you know, here there's sort of different ways. Here's the, so here's one of those cases where there's kind of two different things you can do. So suppose I said, what is the probability of rolling a prime number, right? When you, when you roll here, okay? So, so one thing you could do is you could come in here and, and like, here's your total space of outcomes, right? Because you, you, know, you could roll, a, let's call this the first die and this the second die, right? So when you roll, you could get a one and a one, or you could get a one and a two, or one and a three, or one and a four, right? So all those outcomes are in this table. Right now here, I've already added things together, right? The actual outcomes would be one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, right? And then here would be two, one, two, two, right, et cetera. Now here I've added things already, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so there's six outcomes for this and six outcomes for that. And when I have a process that gives me, you know, six outcomes and six outcomes and all together, I get 36 possible outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. so, so one way of finding like the um, probability of get, oh, here, let me unlock this. Um, oh, I got to turn off this too. Ah. Okay, so so one of the, so here I'm gonna say, let's find the probability of rolling of, of like, uh, and the way we write this, X will be the, the outcome we're going to get. So like if I rolled a one and a three, X here would be four, right? So this is the random variable. So it means the outcome from our process, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's say, what is the probability that X is prime? Okay. So, so there's a, there's sort of a reasonable, you know, kind of fun question to ask. Okay. And, and here we're going to have two ways that we can kind of think about this. Um, so, one way is going to be this, right? One way we can say let's let's count the number of, you know, let's let's have an event e, right? And when I put number, I mean um, the number of things in the event, right? And let's have over the number of, uh, and I'll put o, right? Where e equals the event. Um, that this the, let's see that the sum is prime. Prime. Okay, and O equals the all possible outcomes. You can tell my typing is great. Okay, so there we go. And let me let me stretch this out even more so we can see. Okay, so so this is one way of computing probability, right? So one way of computing probability is to look at, you know, count everything in the event, right? And divide by all the possible outcomes, right? So this is one way of doing of approaching your probability questions, right? And so that's like what we did in topic five DQ two, right? There was always like compute all of the possible outcomes you have, right? And then the other part of the question, part of the part of the rest of the question was what are the number of possible of winning outcomes, right? And then the way you got your probability was to divide, right? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Okay. But that's not the only way. I mean, this is what I'm saying. There's more than one way of doing things. This is part of what I'm trying to get at here. So let's do that. Do it this way. So the primes are things that are only divisible by one in itself, right? So two is a prime, and two is the only um, even prime, right? So I'm just going to mark these in blue, right? So three is prime, right? Um, five is prime, <clears throat> and I don't think I don't think Excel has an is prime function. So I think I have to do this by hand. <laughs> um, seven is prime, All right? So whoops, don't want to code. I'm just, I'm color coding these so we can count them. I want to make it easier to count. Are there any other prime numbers in my list? Is an 11, 11 is prime, right? You know, you know what I mean by prime, right? Yeah. Okay, right, and because like four is not prime because it's you can take two and divide it by two, right? Six is not prime because it's two times three, right? And and eight is two times two times two, right? But but seven you can only write it as seven or seven times one if you like, but there's no other way of breaking it down, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so so the number of things in the event we're interested in are all these blue squares. Now we just count. So there's three there, there's four here, so that's seven. There's six, seven, so that's 13, 14, 15, right? So the so the probability that x is prime uh, is going to be equal to um, 15 over 36, because there's 36 total outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's that's the answer we get, right? Um, here, let me, let me unmerge this. Let me try to get this a little bit better. Okay, so let me, and then I'm gonna come over here and just just um, write that again as a formula. So the, the probability would be 15 over 36, right? And so the probability 0. 0.4166, and it, I guess the sixes go on forever, right? So that's a good, good approximation, okay? Now here's another way, here's another way of doing the same thing, okay? So I could instead, um, actually compute the probability of getting a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, et cetera, right? So I could add that to my list. I could say probability that, um, in fact, let me write it like this. So I'll go write P of X equals um, X, okay? And instead of calling this outcomes, I'm just gonna call this X, okay? So, so th these are the outcomes I could get. I roll my two dice and I get an outcome, right? So I could get two ones and I get a two, right? Or I could get a three, a four, five, six, seven, all the way through 12, right? So the, the, little, the little X here is all the different outcomes I could get, right? Yeah. Okay. And so the big X here, so this is sort of typical probability language. The big X is the random variable. That means I do the experiment and something happens, right? And so, and so what's the probability that X equals something. I don't know why I um sorry, let me let me undo what I just did there. So now I wanna now I just want to put these these various things. So for x equals two, right? What's the probability that x equals two? Um well there are there is one way to get a two over 36 possible ways, right? So this will be equal to two over 36. Right? Okay. Okay, and what how how many sorry? one, it'll be equal to one over 36. In fact, to make it better, let me just, the frequency is one, so I'm gonna use that that cell, right? That way I can just copy things down instead of typing things out all, over and over, right? Okay, so that's that's my frequency, okay? And in fact, in fact, I could even do better. Let me do this. Uh, no, I'll just keep it 36, okay. If, if, I wanna, if I wanna go back and do this again and change the number of rolls my dice can have, then I'll have to modify this formula. So, okay, so, so I can just pull this down like that, right? And I get all these other probabilities, right? So there's all the probabilities. And if I could write them as percentages, if we like, right? So like that, so I've got a 2.78% chance of rolling a two, right? When I, when I roll my two dice, I've got a 16.67% chance of getting a seven, right? And a 2.78% chance of getting a 12, right? So you see how that works? Yeah. Okay, and we could even plot these things like, um, you know, here are my possible outcomes and here are the probability, whoops, let me try that again. Here are my possible outcomes and here are my probabilities, right? And I could plot these, what's the best way to plot these? Let me plot these as, ooh, how could I plot these as like individual bars? Oh, wait, I can't do that. I'm trying to think, how do I want to plot these? What's the best plot I have here? What will this do? Uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Okay, so, ah, I see. Okay, no, okay, I got it, got it, got it. Okay, here, let me try it like this. So let me plot it like this. Okay, so I'm gonna plot it like that. There we go, All right? So, so there's actually a plot. Okay, now these numbers down here are wrong. So let me, let me correct those. That's what I can do here. So I want, I want these numbers instead. Okay, and then that, this is like, this is also like a histogram. This is an actual probability distribution, right? So yeah. the probability of rolling a two is, is you know, 2.78%. And so that's like that, the top of that thing right there, right? And the probability mm -hmm. of rolling a three is kind of close to 6%. The probability of rolling a four is kind of close to 8%, right? So, so this is also a distribution. This is a probability distribution. If I were to actually roll the dice a bunch of times, right, and then count how many twos up through how many twelves I got, I would get something that would look sort of like this, right? Yeah. It's kind of a bellish, bell curvy shape, right? I mean, 
it's more of just a pyramid, right? But kind of bell curvy. I mean, it kind of goes up and down and it's symmetric and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so here would be an alternate way of doing the same thing we did a moment ago where we literally counted um, the number of event, number of things in our event and the total number of outcomes and divided, right? So I could say, well, the, the probability that X is prime equals the probability that X equals two, because that's a prime. Okay, mm -hmm. in fact, let me do it like this. Or X, here's where we have to really use our knowledge of probability. X equals three or x equals five, or x equals seven, or x equals 11, because those are all the primes, right? Yeah. OK, and now we're going to use the fact that, so, so now we, you, you know, somewhere in the book, you've learned some things about probability. So these, these ors are the same as like the book might write unions yeah. of, of events, right? So if, so if you have, you, you know, your event could be get a two, right, which is right there. The other event here could be get a three, right? But they're they're disjoint, right? There's no threes that are also twos, right? There's no fives that are threes or twos, right? So these are all disjoint. And so when I have disjoint events like that, then then this turns out I can just sum up the probabilities. So this is actually the same as p of x equals two plus p of x equals whoops three plus p of x equals five plus p of x equals seven plus p of x equals 11, right? Those are all my possibilities. And so now I need to make this even longer again. Okay, no, even longer, ugh. Okay, even longer. Okay, let me combine those. Sorry, I've tried to... I'm, Probably spending too much time trying to make things look good, but okay, maybe I'm failing. Okay, go over there. There we go. Okay, so th so there's two very different looking computations, right? I'm computing p of x equals prime by counting, right yeah. here, and here I'm computing p of x equals prime by, you know, kind of writing things out logically, right there that that or statement, right, and then using my laws of probability, right, to change this into a sum of other probabilities. Right, and then I can compute that. So then I can say equals. Well, what's the probability that x equals two? All right, that one right there. Well, it's this here, plus the probability that x equals three. That's um, this one, plus the probability that x x is over here equals five, plus the probability that x equals seven, plus the probability that x equals eleven. All right, and so I get that. And now let me turn this into a percentage so we can compare nicely. Right, and these are exactly the same. Yeah. Right? Okay, so so that's what I was trying to get at. There's two very different ways, right, yeah. of of answering that question. P of x is prime. Mm -hmm. One involves counting, and one involves using the laws of probability. Right. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing that makes probability difficult because very often when you attack a problem, you just don't know which thing to use. Right. Do I want to try to count some stuff? Or do I want to try to use some laws of probability to compute some stuff? Or what do I want to do, right? Yeah. That's part of the problem. And the counting can sometimes get very tricky, as you may have noticed. Yeah. All right. So that's the thing. So if you have a particular question you want to look at, we can do that. Otherwise, maybe just think no, about it. No particular it. question. OK. I was actually going over the major assignment um, for the writing portion, mm -hmm. it's just like an essay, right? Yeah, I mean, we yeah, we give you a template that you should use lightly as a template. So it's, it's got a bunch of questions. And each one of those questions should be addressed. At least if they're appropriate, they should be addressed. But they should be addressed in paragraph style, mm -hmm. right? So so you should take that template and and kind of Maybe leave the questions in there while you're while you're writing your essay, um, but then make sure you answer the questions that, that apply. Exactly. What's in the material for topic for the major assignment three? It's called I don't know. It's called writing template or something like that. I also gave it to you back in topic three DQ one, but it's in it's in LoudCloud under under the major assignment um, three stuff. It's in there. 
Okay. It's a doc. It's a doc file. So you can use you can use that file, right? Um, and it's it's got some headings which you might want to leave in place, or you might want to change them a little bit. They they have there are things like um, I mean I think they maybe phrase these questions like how will you manage your project, right? So you you might take that and change it to management of project for the title of that section or the the header for that section, and and leave those headers in just so I can look through and see those headers in there. All right, but then, but then the main body will be a you know a written paper, so yeah. so essay like yeah. Okay. Okay. Sound good. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I had I had exactly one person come last week, and so far you're the only person this week. So we'll see. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to have lots of people come to office hours, but they're getting to be less used. It's because they're understanding more. The videos, yeah, maybe, the videos are helping a lot. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, good. Yeah, who knows? Maybe. Um, I guess if you don't have any objections, if I if I look at this later and think that what we just did is worth posting somewhere, would no, that be okay with you? It's actually it's very helpful and it might help another student. Yeah, I mean that's how I get a lot of the videos is just using these sessions to to make videos. So.